Hi. Hi, I'm Edie. I'm Judy. And, and together, together we're the Rainbow, Rainbow Granny. Hey! Yeah, I want to thank you for coming out and watching us and having a good time and joining us over here. Oh my God, look into my eyes. He's here already. Man, you got ooh, lightning wow. fast. Lightning fast. So we're just coming off of TikTok Live. We do every Saturday and Sunday at 8 in the morning Eastern time. And now we're hopping over here to YouTube Live at 9 o'clock. Eastern time, every Saturday and Sunday, you know, except for a few times we might not make it. We're, we're here. Grandma Mona is here. Hey, ladies. And XX Midnight XX. There they go. Wow, what a name. Hmm. What do you need me to do, honey? I want to see this. Oh, make okay. Sure it's in the right spot. And Christy yeah, Marie is here. Hey, and Fuzzy Bear. Good morning, Edie and Judy and everyone. Hey, morning. How you doing? Okay, this is nasty night, nasty Nina. Oh, okay. X you know, X I wish it was some way that everybody could have the same name they have over there, because it's it's hard on my little brain to put this all well, together. Probably we make our probably we make our profile different times, right? Yeah. I mean, I I still I never even learned how to do email and how to do my so whenever people see my email address. You know, the personal email is like, well, what's that? You know, because I didn't know how to do it. So I came up with some wacko name and I won't change it because I don't know how. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher Cooley, hey. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Ah, the midnight name is Iris. Thank hey, you Iris. very much, everybody. So what's going on today? We got something good to talk about. Um, I know you got something good to talk about. What do I have? Edie been watching this show. Yes. On our on our on Discovery Channel. Yeah. This is really cool. And it's called Generation Drag. Right. And if you haven't had an opportunity to see Generation Drag, you gotta check this out. For one, Edie and Judy are part of the LGBT plus community. If you don't know us and you've never seen us before, that's who we are. So also take a chance and hit the button, subscribe so that you can make sure that you don't you know, miss us. You can catch every one of our little chit chats on here. We love also, getting on here, having coffee. And yeah. Also, if you can minimize the chat and hit the thumbs up so that pushes the algorithm oh, out. So definitely. Folks know that we're here this morning. Because right now I see a whole bunch of people in here, but okay, there went another one. Come on, give me another thumbs up. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Thank Come you. On. You got. Thank you. Got it from my. Okay, we'll, we'll have to wait till there's some more scrolling here because our little heart here is hiding your message. I'm going to read it as soon as I can. Yeah. Okay, so. So generation, the generation Drag, it happens to be this cool show that shows these young kids that are having the opportunity like to dress in drag. like like 12 years old. Yeah, after, just young yeah. kids. And what's amazing with this show is that these are all kids that have all the parent support. You know, because parents are spending a lot of money in this this drag. And I would never have dreamed in my wildest. If I wouldn't have seen it on TV, I would not believe that there are parents that spend. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars, just like, you know, how everybody goes out and spends all that money for their daughters to have them pretty dresses and be uh, Princess um, Idaho, you know. So these same people are spending thousands and thousands of they call it a draggy taunt. I got, I got to hold you here. There's a little flirtation going on here in the comment. Between who? <laughs> because Chris, Chris really likes Iris's name. I think that's a really beautiful oh, name. Oh, that Chris is flirting, and, is she? And Iris is blushing. Oh, yeah. Does, does Iris know Chris <laughs> so, from the other? So, Tawanya is letting us know that this is Renee because, you know, Renee is a really beautiful name, too. Yes, it is. Think? Yes, it is. Very pretty. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, so so generation generation fan drag. Dance, so drag. so sorry. what generation happened is drag. like with a dad taking a, a young boy out to buy drag shoes, it's just like amazing to see this, you know, to see them out shopping. And then so the one little girl, she has transitioned from a little boy to a little girl, and she's um I would say some type of Hispanic and she's got all these pretty wild curls and everything. So her dad and her mom are very, very supportive of her, which is just really um, the, the dad's families are all behind them. The mom's family, she, they just can't even look at it. They can't, oh, really? they just like, Oh my God, you know, it's like, I can't believe it. But so the, so the dad is so supportive of them. They went 
and dad went shopping for his draggy clothes too. So dad, which is a big guy with a beard and he's bald, <laughs> goes and they take him shopping and he buys these big high heels that must be size 14 men look like Frankenstein feet, right? And he's strutting, his ankle goes off to the side and he gets ready to go down. And the, the woman, the sales clerk, she reaches out to grab him to keep him from falling. And I'm thinking, man, stay back. He'll take you down too. This is not going to be pretty. But anyway, he keeps from falling. So they take him and this professional makeup artist puts on their makeup mm -hmm. for drag, draggy taunt or whatever, this drag practice. Yeah, it's a competition that the kids are signing up for. So they go to a drag practice where dad is dragging with his, his new daughter and stuff. And they did his makeup up to where, you know, that drag queen makeup where it's like a little bit over the top. <laughs> okay, midnight, I and see glitter. a message. Come back, come back tomorrow. Glitter all in his beard and stuff. It, I mean, oh, really? it just, oh, oh it's all done up, yeah. just all completely done up. But he's a he got a big old beer belly. He's got a mesh shirt on with his beer belly hanging out <laughs> over top of it and a glittery top on. It's just really, really. But the point of the matter is he's supportive of his daughter. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you know, the rest of the world may think, no matter what the stepmom or grandmom or whoever else may think, yeah. he is supportive. And so that's what's interesting is to see that there is more that there's more people out there that are supportive, you know? Right, right. We really need to see this and hear this. And what was right. nice, I, I, I haven't been watching it. I've been, I've been at work while Edie has this on, but I've caught pieces of a few episodes. I liked one where, you know, there's the little girl getting ready for, for the competition. And she's, she's really nice. She's got, you know, really long hair and the color in her hair. And she's like really outgoing personality. But then they thought for fun, her dad put on this, this wig and started, you know, walking down through the kitchen. And she looked at him and said, you do this better than I do. And I'm thinking, <laughs> dad had a lot more years watching women than a <laughs> little 12-year-old had. I mean, she may have been watching women while since a little boy and growing up and realizing that she's a girl. But, you know, dad been watching women So what a I did longer. see on there, too, was... Um, she took down because she's transitioned too. She yeah. told her um, brother and sister that I think it was a brother and sister, but anyway, she told them that the pictures that are hanging in their house of mm -hmm. when she was a little boy, she found to be um, uh, bothersome. Yeah, it was bothersome yeah. and sad to her because that person was when she was spending all that time trying so hard to be what they thought she was. Hey, look, I'm ready to cry. Because don't cry. Because within her heart and in her inside, she felt that she was a, a girl. And there she is, this little boy all dressed up. And, you know, they're making her, like, suffer through that. Yeah. So now that they've accepted the fact that she is who she is, they uh -huh. still had the pictures hanging right there by mm -hmm. the breakfast table. So every day when she'd sit there and eat her cereal and stuff, she'd have to look up and see a picture of okay. this little boy that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Somebody that she was pretending. Mm -hmm. So she told him. But the mother was resistant, even though they're they're um, supportive of her. The mother was very resistant in the fact that that was her memories. How can I let you take away my memories? But once they started talking about it and everything, mm -hmm. and I sat there and thought, you know what? You don't have to take away your memories. But how about take them away from the dining room table, put them in your bedroom. Right. Hang them up in your bedroom there where you can get well, up in the morning and put your robe on and stuff and look over I would and even say put it in a book because if your kids are going to come in and out of the room, I mean, it takes parents a while to understand, I think. Well, and how to, yeah. And it's like, because they because they don't understand. They, they, I think that they just see that well, this is my child and now my child's like this. It's, it's, but it's yeah. not like your they kid, look at it it's not like your kid was going to be an artist and grew up to be an engineer. It's not that. So you don't get to show all the artwork when they were a kid, and now they're an engineer, and you're showing the the, the construction site and things. It's it's it's, the, it's, it's who they are. It's, it's, right. it's much more intimate than that. And I've heard this a lot from other folks we've talked with too. I mean, even w w one of our videos, one of our YouTube episodes where we interviewed uh, Leisha. Yes. And one of the questions I asked her about was. <laughs> With what about the old photos? Because she's married, and I think the only thing they're having some trouble. Sorry, you can yeah. talk to them. Okay, I think the only trouble, the only thing pictures they still have up is like what to do with the wedding photos, because the wedding photos, Lisa was male, but it's not really her, but a wife is with her, and it's like, well, what do you do with the wedding photos now? And so I think they were still determining that, but um, 
but but I can understand because, you know, if for me just a simple thing when I was little and I put a they put a dress on me and it was just so awful and I'm not transgender at all but I was still in the completely completely yeah. wrong clothes you know doing completely wrong stuff and. It's not like I can look at those pictures and say, oh, no, that's not me. I don't like it. But I just remember the feeling. And what I'm talking about is remembering the feeling of uh, um, being in just the wrong clothes. <coughs> so if, oh, I'm, if I'm trying to go back and think in the feeling of being in the wrong body and now you're going to show it to me over and over again. Right. You know, it's just like, so I think anybody can just remember, just think of something that wasn't you. Would you want a constant reminder of it? Right. So they did, you know, I haven't seen the part where they actually took it down, but they did talk okay. about it. And I thought it was nice that it was something that she had to talk to her siblings to get like a boost, but to be able to even address the parents with something. Because, you know, there's been things, you know yourself, if you wanted to address the fact that you wanted to change the color of your bedroom when you were a kid, it was something that you had to like, I don't know. Mom's probably not going to want me to paint my room orange. And, you know, you you scared to ask her, you know, so to, to ask her to take a picture down that means so much to her, you know, would be difficult. So I want to thank everybody that's joining us and coming in here. We'll try to make sure we read any of the comments. Right. So I want to read some of the comments to Wanda saying, my father was so supportive of my lifestyle. I wish he was still here with me. Mm. At there. least you have that, though. You have that and you have that memory. So many people yeah. don't have that. And yeah. that's what we're trying to encourage people. You know, people late at night when somebody's sitting there and they're watching um, Edie and Judy Rainbow Grannies, mm -hmm. a lot of times that's what they're watching for is to find out and learn. See, that's what we're all about. It's just a chance to learn and share with someone. So Disney is here from the UK and said, hey, I, have, I have the same issue with my mom when I go. To visit, I have to see pictures of a young girl who doesn't exist anymore. Right. Right. Right, which is yeah. a very painful time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I've never transitioned or anything like that, but I know that I spent, you know, my youth basically pretending to be someone that I really wasn't. So it was a, a suffering time for me, too. And I remember when we went to California as so I was just a little kid, and my grandma bought me this dress. My hat's crooked. I was trying to fix it, but everything's backwards. Anyway, she bought me this dress. And I remember coming home and my heart just aching, thinking that, oh, my God. And I remember my mom looking at me and she said, you only have to wear it one time so that grandma can see you in it. Oh. You know, and, and it wasn't so much. It was my mom thought it was mainly the which I hated the print of the dress. It was these yeah. big circles with circles around the circles, you know, black and white polka dot dress, just a Daisy Duke dress. But it wasn't just that. It was the dress. Mm -hmm. It was just a dress, you know. It just I felt so uncomfortable and suffering in it and everything. So, I mean, just to have my mom to affirm the fact that it wasn't something that I had to look forward to every other Sunday wearing this dress at grandma because it would make you want to throw yourself off the, off the roof or something, you know? <laughs> I mean, and, you know, I mean, there are kids that just have to suffer through all that yeah. kind of. Yeah. So going back to the show, Generation Drag, yeah. another piece I saw on it was one of the parents who was saying, well, you know, because they were asking, you know, why you, how are you so accepting of your kid being transgender? A lot of people can't handle this. And then being on drag on top of that, and right. a lot of your parents can't handle that. And he just said, well, if my kid was, you know, going out for the football team, I'd be putting everything behind him. Right. So here's my kid is going out for drag. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put everything behind this kid, my so kid going out for thousands drag. thousands and thousands of dollars doing wigs. And this one kid, I mean, his wig is huge and it's got like a smoke thing built in it. So when he walks out on the stage, it'll a fog machine, you know, because these kids ain't just like us where you put a wig on dance across the stage. No, they're thinking big, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and they, they got some money behind them. Most of them, you know, yeah. you can tell the poor ones when you see, when you see their wigs yeah. I mean, because they're very expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, these aren't, yes. you know, these are some very bad and the way they, you know, their I'm, little edges go. And I guess you're not finding them at the, at the Goodwill. Huh? No, I ain't never seen a drag wig at the Goodwill. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. No. 
That don't mean okay. that Monday I won't go down there start looking. and there'll be one. <laughs> I walk in there and see one of the big blue wigs with the smoke machine coming out of it. You know who's going <laughs> home with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, my. I, that might be fun. I, I've never put on, you know, I wonder, wonder if we can get the neighbors come up and like do me, like do my makeup and like that drag okay. makeup, oh, yeah. you know, and make eyelashes uh -huh. and stuff, and you know. Everything. Oh, yeah, the whole works. I'd like yeah. to see what the whole works looks like. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? I think that would and be then fun. I have boobies. So okay. to have, you know, to bring bring the boobies up and, uh -huh. you yeah. know. That'd be fun. Be I think so, too. Dressed up time. Oh, my God. Does that mean I'm a drag queen? Uh -huh. Maybe. There you, go. Ooh, well, you know, yeah. because I'm built like. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying the drag queen modeled themselves off of you? Well, you know. <laughs> Some of the ones I see could stand to use a little more spandex, you know? I mean, well, we got a drag show coming in town here pretty soon. We went last week down to a concert at the City Winery, and it was um, Women Who Rock, and it was really a nice time. They had a brunch and stuff. We ate sure. good and everything. But uh, I see the same places having a, a drag show, and this is not just your ordinary drag show. These, these are, are professional. Yeah, these are professional yeah. that look, you know, look. Because some of the drag shows we've been to see, I'm telling you, they look like your Uncle Harold dressed up in, <laughs> in Aunt Gladys's dress. You know, it's just like, oh, my goodness. And somebody told him he looked good. But you know what, though? We can't even worry about how he looked. It's about how he felt. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, and that's where he's feeling mm -hmm. the joy of being able to dress up. I mean, I got to stop being like that because that's not very nice of me. Yeah. And we all know Rainbow Granny's nice. Right. You know, well, it's not like about, you, you know, I'm joking. I'm joking about it because, you know, I mean, we all know what looks good and what don't. But it's about Uncle Harold feeling really good when he gets the opportunity to put on the wig, the wig uh -huh. and the makeup and the dress and the high heel shoes. And that's what makes him happy. And who yeah. am I or anybody else to put him down? What I liked is when a, when a drag king group started up in Pittsburgh and so they were very early and they wanted to you know, hone their skills and get real talented, put on good shows. And they were just at the start of it. They wanted to go into some competitions. And so at the very beginning, it was very rough, very shaky. They were learning how to, how to, how they wanted to dress and how they wanted to do their, their music and all of that. And so what they did was bring out the whole community to come join us and cheer us on and help us, you know, help us get better. Mm -hmm. And that was real nice coming from the, from the, you know, from the ground up and developing a great dry queen. Drag yeah, King, drag I King love show. drag kings. I've seen several of them, and boy, is it Wanda? Have you ever seen a drag king show? Yes. Boy, yeah. I tell you, those can be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, to see yeah. the the yes. young women, you know, uh, butchered up or whatever yes. in their yeah. little mm -hmm. outfits and stuff, and they're working it and everything. So I know. went to one in the UK when I was there visiting visiting my daughter, mm -hmm. and there happened to be a drag king show. Did this one? This was like they travel across the world. These folks were so good and so gimmicky with the different shows they did. And I've never seen anything like this with the Drag King show. And I think it's because it was in England and you, you grow up with theater in England. So you grow up with Shakespeare and all right. these. So you seem very, very literate compared to a lot of people I see here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they could do all these, all these plays, all these play on the different literature that they grew up with. And they were so clever. And I'm like, wow. And the whole audience gets that. And I'm like, wow. But they, and they, they were real good. So Disney said, yeah. I, had, Go ahead. I had to argue with my mom every year when it came to getting my school uniform to let. Um, let him wear pants and stuff. Yeah, to let me wear trousers instead of a skirt. And Chrissy is, I never understand the parents who don't stand behind their kids no matter what. So it is sad. sad. I mean, but yeah. yeah, but you know what? A lot of that just comes from they just don't understand. And and it, it's sad. It is really, really sad, you know, to think that so many of them, but there are a lot of them, they believe it's a reflection on themselves. It's mm -hmm. like um they've been they're such a failure. If they have a child that comes out to be um LGBT plus community then it's must they must have failed they must have drank some kind of water that contaminated the baby or they you know they didn't do what they should have did or they should have took yeah, them, their prenatal vitamins or whatever it's all a politician or, or they let on. weird uncle rob be by the little boy a little bit too long and <laughs> god only knows what he did I was in the news recently something about some guy who said yeah we don't, we don't raise our kids like that and it's yeah like 
like you ra don't raise your kids like yeah, that. Yeah, you, you know, it's not oh, about the, raising your kids. Oh, there was a guy we saw was a neighbor who lived a couple miles away, and and he mm -hmm. he was fine with us being gay. And it's like, oh yeah, when you're a dog, but I don't let my kids do that. I don't let my kids do that. I don't yeah. let my kids do that. Like, kid do that. Well, you know, it's not about letting your kids do something. People <laughs> are who they are. This is inside of you. You know, this is not something told them. anybody in them. their right mind would not pick yeah. to be hated <laughs> and ridiculed throughout their lives. Right. right. You right. know, this is just, but, but you got to go ahead and appreciate those of us that have stepped out there and are who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, Judy and I are part of the community in order to help support the rest of the community to allow everybody to know it's okay. You're going to be yeah. okay. Yeah. And, you know, and it's gotten better and better. And, you know, and I know we sit here in Pittsburgh where it is very progressive. I know at least the neighborhood we were in are very progressive. Mm -hmm. And so... It's, it's like we go places all rainbowed out. And even when we were engaged, I still wouldn't go out in public and tell anybody I was engaged, right? I'm always thinking, you know, there's going to be some hate there or something. But I'm being in line with Edie. She's telling everybody in line, oh, hey, yeah. I'm engaged. This is my fiance. I was, so excited. Like, <laughs> I was so excited. I could, I, I never even thought about it. It was just like, I just want, I'm engaged, you know? You know, we get married. I was so engaged, you know, so happy, you know, because I mean, I, it's like I had waited my whole life to actually find someone that got me and somebody that loved me, mm -hmm. you know, and understood me. And I, I mean, yeah. there's so many, I have so many little quirky things. A lot of you know me or feel like you know me, but I have so many little quirky things about me, you know, as far as like I'm artistic, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm strange. She's but strange. She's funny. Judy's yeah. okay with it. You know, she's <laughs> yeah. okay with who I am, you know, and yeah. the, the fact that I do, I am artistic and I like to make stuff and, mm -hmm. and I watch weird shows and pimple videos and just weird stuff, you know, but, but it's okay because yeah. Judy's yeah. okay with it. And so it. the thing is, as much as I've been out there, I've been part of political group, you know, a political activist and all of this and been all out there in public whenever anybody wants you know, some organization wants someone from the gay community to speak. They always come to me because they want to ask Judy, and I, I do it. But yet I'm standing in line at Walmart, and it's like, what do you mean you're telling everybody we're engaged, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, right? But but it's okay. And I was thinking a few weeks ago, it just hit me like, wow, I'm enjoying my life. Edie and I are married. We have a nice home. We've got good friends. We've got close family. And, and life is just very calm and wonderful. And why wasn't it always like this? You know, I just think, who are these people who, like, don't want us to do this? It's just so strange for anybody to be like that. Yeah, that somebody doesn't want to see us happy. How can you, how does that happen? But then I said, and I have to remember, it, it can be as close as the next neighborhood where people are are hating and giving gay folks a hard time, right. you know, and in, a, in the next state and in the next country. And so, if anything, I like that we're here, and I like that show, Generation Drag, because it shows this is what we can have. This is this is the good part of and, life. And a change in the world. Because yeah. for one, you would have never seen a family get together and support a little boy that wants to dress up in a little girl in a little dress right. or whatever. You would have never seen that. And then for them to actually make a TV show of it mm -hmm. where there's several families and they're all supportive of their children. And like, I mean. I'm sure there's there's a lot of people that aren't supportive. We still have that, but we've gotten at least to where there are people that are in and a TV station will pick it up because for one they know there are people that will watch it. Right. But there's people like us that need to watch it. Mm -hmm. We need to know that the world is changing and that we're right. accepted and that you're accepted and that the yeah. that little girl will be okay when she goes on off yeah. and everything. And I think when it comes to something like generation drag that maybe there's an element for people who who look at it as so different and they're afraid of it it's a way for them to step in because it's entertainment and competition yeah and so and drag had always been entertainment yes. i mean always from milton bull you know yes. from way back before oh, the TV, yeah. right yeah. so it's a it's a way to ease people in and yeah. see it's okay see, so, so disney thing i got asked at work why did i choose to be trans so i said it's not a choice and the only choice I made was to be comfortable being my true self. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's exactly it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 
And, you know, and sometimes, you know, Disney, I think it's sometimes okay that they can ask you. I mean, I hope they're asking you in a nice way and not mean, but yeah. either way. Because we have people, because ask people us need to know on our, on our TikTok. Um, a lot of people ask questions and a lot of like, sometimes the moderators or somebody will think that's such a rude thing for that person to ask them. But I mean, we got to yeah. just step back a lot of times and let somebody go ahead and mm -hmm. ask us questions that put us a little bit on the uncomfortable side because yeah. they don't know. And mm -hmm. a lot of times they're asking questions because they just, they're so glad to have an opportunity to be behind a, a computer screen where they're not yeah. face to face with us and be able to ask us some kind of question and, and, and learn something. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, I, you know, as long as it's not something so personal that I can't handle it, right. we'll go ahead and, you know, let them do. Right. As long as they're asking because they really want to know. Right. And that person, yeah. if they ask you like that, that's because they don't realize that being trans is not a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is something that has been inside you since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. It's just that now you actually have gotten to the point where you're comfortable with and you can do what you need to do and do. So for me, being gay is not a choice. I've just gotten to the point in my life where I'm comfortable with who I am and I'm happy mm -hmm. in my situation. And it is who it is. And mm -hmm. honestly, this is the way I feel. Yeah. If you don't like it, then you don't have to be around it. You don't have to be around me. I, I'm okay, you know, because I will be okay. I'm fortunate enough that, you know, I'm going to have my sandwich today. I, I'm okay, and, and it's warm and dry right here. Right. We, we get up in the morning, we have our coffee like everybody else does. Now, maybe That's not right. everybody comes on Saturday and Sunday doing live YouTube, no. but no, we but just get up in the morning and have coffee. A lot of people come on to listen to us to have it. You know, we put our pants on one leg at a time. I forgot. Let, let's throw a little <laughs> shout out. Elmira is not here, but Elmira has told me to try to call her in the morning because uh, she wants me to wake her up because she keeps missing our Saturday morning. Uh, Amara, I don't, I can't call you, but I really wish I could, you know, or at least, <laughs> uh, so by the time you get used to the time change, it'll be all right. It'll be switching back. Yeah. Yeah. So this is that they did say that they were sorry they asked it in an inappropriate way. Yeah. See, they probably yeah. did not mean the way it sounded. You know, well, or maybe they did, but they apologized for it. Right. Once they hear the answer. I know I went to, there was a, a class at a university, a psychology class, where the students were all training be, to become therapists. And this was way back in like the 1980s. And so there was a professor there who went out looking for people who would be on a panel to come into class on a panel, like three or four of us, so that the students could, we could talk about our lives being gay and students could ask us questions. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, somebody came to me and said, Judy, you want to do this? And I said, sure. What day? What time? And it was really neat. I think that was the first time I really spoke in public like that. Mm -hmm. But and, and it was a class where I thought, well, they're going to be therapists. You know, yeah. they're going to have gay clients and they're going to want to know how to help them. Yeah. Well, and so know, how to help them with just knowing what our lives are. They invited us to speak at a few different things. We went to speak yeah. for P-Flag, wasn't it? P-Flag yeah. or was it yeah, with P flag, you know, and the local right, and then another tanker. organization that Hulang, yeah, and it was just like I can't believe that they wanted us to come <laughs> and talk, you know, that, that yeah. you and I had something they felt was of value, but it's pretty cool that you know we've yeah. gotten to that and it's pretty nice. So and so, and I guess what I'm putting out there is anytime somebody asks us a question, I mean I'm proud of you, Disney. If they want, if they were rude when they asked you, right, but you still gave them an honest answer. Right. That lets them think, you know, and then, um, right. And you didn't, I've, you know, just, I mean, when somebody asks you something, just try not to snap off at mm -hmm. them, you know, unless they're coming off with something real nasty because people will right. be nasty, right? Right, you know, they're, but uh, you know, just they're just, just edging for a fight, and right? You, a you know, fight, but, right. Yeah. But if you just need to educate somebody, mm -hmm. that's nice because that gave him some kind of little thing back there in the back of his mind to think about. And he'll use that later on because, you know, we educated him. And I know so. the job I had when I came out at the job, some people came to me and said, well, can I ask you a question? That they're going to be stupid questions. I said, you could ask me anything. Yeah. You know, if it's anything personal, I don't want to answer. I won't. But you're just, and it was because they want to ask questions to understand what being gay was. Because 
you know, they weren't. They didn't know anybody that they knew of who was gay. Well, you have to have a rainbow shirt and... to start with. <laughs> you know? And then you have to know how to work your wrist. You know, you can't be just like, you know, you can't walk around like this. Yeah. You know, you got to work your wrist and you got to have a rainbow shirt. Right? Yeah. yeah and there you go. There and you a go. mug. You got to have a mug. <laughs> <laughs> What I like to do now, you're reminding me of, of photos, like even in, in generation. You gotta have them ass. In generation drag, you gotta have, they, wait. You gotta have leather chaps with your ass cheeks standing out. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, you can't be just walking around here looking just normal. All right there, we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, well, and so in that in that TV show, one of the kids was showing all the, the photos when they were a little boy and extremely effeminate as a little boy. Oh my goodness. He was in a uh, diaper and he had a purse on his <laughs> arm and he's all flinged out. And it's like that they knew that they knew he was probably exactly. doing cartwheels inside before he got here. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it reminded me that when we look at any of our photos or any of our friends, we look at our photo, you know, the family photo, we can pick out which one is oh, our there. friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like yeah. so obvious. That's so, all part of that gate art. Oh, what I love, we were looking at with my family. We were looking at the home movie. So in the home movie, that was a year old and one of those baby swings. And I'm there in the baby swing, my arm up like this. As I'm a year old swinging like this. My brother looked at me. Said, yeah, even then. Yeah, but we couldn't. <laughs> we didn't know. We couldn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I have a baby picture too, and I was probably about. A little over a year or so, and I had this pink dress on and everything. But see, I'm a I'm a bit of a fast fashion. What is it? Fashion horse. Fast fast <laughs> yes, fast Alicia or whatever. But anyway, uh, I'm sitting there in this pink dress, right? This one in the old days when two people used to yeah buy a little Olin Mills pictures, right? I don't even think I was two because I I just little, right? You're I got right. my hands like my hand like this in front of me, saying, and then you can just look at my face, and I'm like. How you like my pink dress? Because <laughs> I'm just too cool. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to limit today to a half hour. I want to thank you guys for joining us and coming in here and watching and following us. If you're not following or subscribing, there's no cost to subscribing in YouTube here. But it helps us with the watch hours. We were trying really hard to receive 4,000 watch hours in a year. You know, we're, we're not going to make that total, but it's really nice what we're doing and we're having a good time. And evidently, you guys are having a good time watching this. So, so everybody have a great day. I guess we'll be back tomorrow. That's right. We'll see we'll you tomorrow, tomorrow on YouTube at nine o'clock Eastern time. Let's see. Oh, what should we call this one? Oh, yeah. That's what we want to do, too. Every every uh, time we finish up with a show. We're trying real hard to have you guys help participate in what we should title these. What should we title these? You so know, it's got to be attention-grabbing yeah, title, a fun title. Something that makes people want to jump out there and say, ooh, what's that? Yeah, and it's not watch Judy dance naked across. You no, know, it's not that. we got to do like a real title. <laughs> yeah, we got to be kind of honest, what we talked about. You know, yeah. so they'll know. So oh, what do you think? Some Come on. Ideas, some ideas. Wanda, what do you think today's title should be? Tidbits. <laughs> what did you say? Tidbits. 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 Nuggets tidbits. and tidbits. Nuggets and tidbits. Yes. Right, how about some more ideas? We need we need a lot of ideas so we can pick them. Yeah. So what you guys, what you thinking here? Let's see. Always love seeing you too, Disney. I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow morning. But um, I will probably go ahead. Oh, yeah, Disney, don't forget to change your clock tonight, right? Surviving anything said, I love nuggets. <laughs> I love nuggets too. <laughs> didn't, we, didn't we talk about nuggets last Surviving week? Nuggets? And that little girl, that little girl that had them 3,000 degree nuggets that burned the inside of her mouth out. Mm -hmm. You know, her mother took and poured lighter fluid in her. Oh, I mean, there ain't no way that little girl got burned up that bad. I mean, I, 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 I've eaten nuggets 5,000 times from KFC or from everywhere. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I ain't never, never found a nugget to burn my mouth. I want to see uh -huh. that. That's what, yeah. Oh, that's what we were going to do. Remember, we okay. wanted to take the oh, meat we thermometer gonna... and ride around and go to different places, but put, order a, a, put a nugget, there. put it in there, and then come back and show you how hot uh -huh. it was. Uh -huh. This, that's my goal for this week. Okay, I'm gonna hit me uh, about three or four different nugget places so I can uh -huh. tell you how hot are my nuggets. 
Yeah. Oh, and that's going to be the title of that one. How, how hard, hard are, are my nuggets? nuggets? <laughs> I thought, how hard are my nuggets? How hard are my nuggets? <laughs> you know, my nuggets is hard. My nuts are nuts. My nuggets are harder than your nuggets. My nuggets are harder than yours. My nuggets are harder because your nuggets are cooler because my nuggets are harder than yours. There you okay, go. guys. Thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow. Sing along Bye. with Edie. That's what we'll call, we'll call this one. Sing along with Edie. Sing Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Okay.